Good morning, everybody. It is day number four of the consecration to St. Joseph. Hi, Hen. Hi, good morning. Hi. You ready to start? I am. God, the, re the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. The holy example of Jesus Christ, who while upon earth honored St. Joseph so highly and was obedient to him during his life, should be sufficient to inflame the hearts of all with devotion to this saint, St. Alphonsus Liguria. Liguri. Are you familiar with the phrase to Jesus through Mary? It's a wonderful expression of devotion coined in the early 18th century by St. Louis, Louis de Montfort. In this book, True Devotion to Mary, St. Louis taught that Mary is the surest, easiest, and fastest way of going to Jesus to instill this message in people's hearts. St. Louis fervently promoted the rosary and Marian consecration. What is interesting, though, is that in all of St. Louis's writings, he only mentions St. Joseph a few times. Why is that? Didn't he love St. Joseph? Oh, yes. St. Louis de Montfort loved St. Joseph very much. Every saint loves St. Joseph. The reason he didn't offer any significant teaching on St. Joseph is because the church had not yet developed a theology of St. Joseph. An understanding of the greatness of St. Joseph did not begin to flourish in the devotional life of the church until the mid-19th century, a hundred years after St. Louis de Montfort lived. Were St. Louis de Montfort preaching in the streets of France today, he would most likely be heard extolling the words, the wonders of St. Joseph. He might even add St. Joseph to his phrase and say, to Jesus through Mary and Joseph. Jesus wants you to know and love his mother and his father. The two greatest saints in Christianity are Mary and St. Joseph. Consecration to St. Joseph flows naturally from the baptismal consecration to Jesus and filial consecration to Mary. Indeed, consecration to St. Joseph, your spiritual father, allows you to be consecrated to each person of the Holy Family. In our day, marriage and family are under attack. Jesus and Mary want you to be consecrated to St. Joseph because there is no father or husband who knows more about the sacredness of marriage and the family or the self-sacrificing love required of fathers and husbands than St. Joseph. His paternal mission continues from heaven. He is our guardian, loving protector, and fearless defender. He is the model of saintly fatherhood. After Christ, St. Joseph is the model of heroic manhood and the defender of marriage, chastity, and life itself. Consecration to St. Joseph is the key to overcoming the anthropological confusion so prevalent in our times. Under the watchful, steadfast love and care of St. Joseph, all ideologies and idols will crumble and fall before Jesus Christ. How though how thou, St. Joseph, didst rejoice to have always near you God himself, and to see the idols of the Egyptians fall prostrate to the ground before him. Blessed Janoria Maria Sarnelli. Consecration to St. Joseph will increase your love for Jesus. The entire life and mission of St. Joseph points to Jesus. St. Joseph never 
points to himself. His role is to lead everyone to Jesus, just as Mary does. Mary was predestined to be the Immaculate Mother of the Savior. St. Joseph was predestined to be the earthly father of the Savior and your spiritual father. Your spiritual father has been given all the graces necessary to complete his mission, a mission that includes increasing your relationship with Jesus. Joseph carried Jesus Christ first to Egypt, then to Judea, and so traced for us the path of the apostles who preached his name to the Jews and to the Gentiles, St. Hilary of Poitiers. St. Joseph was the guardian of Jesus and Mary. He was naturally also the one who introduced those souls eager to approach them more closely. Blessed Jean Joseph Lataste. Did we say the correct page for this for for the listeners? Yes. Oh, we yes. did. Okay. All and, right. Um, now we're going to turn to page 226. If you have the book, if not, it's on the screen. And we're going to read The Wonder. The Wonder today is going to be The Privileges of Devotion to St. Joseph. Privileges of Devotion to St. Joseph. Love St. Joseph a lot. Love him with all your soul because he together with Jesus is the person who has most loved our Blessed Lady and been closer to, closest to God. He is the person who has most loved God after our mother. He deserves your affection and it will do you good to get to know him because he is the master of the interior life and has great power before the Lord and before the mother of God, Saint Jose Maria Escriva. Jesus wants you to love Saint Joseph. Our lady wants you to love Saint Joseph. They both want this so that your virtue and holiness may increase. No matter what your vocation or state in life may be, you will be blessed if you maintain a fervent devotion to St. Joseph. The privileges of devotion to St. Joseph are tremendous, and they are yours for the taking. Devotion to St. Joseph is powerful because he gives his protection, his example, and his blessing. St. George Preta. Blessed Maria Teresa of St. Joseph loved St. Joseph and received extraordinary graces from heaven because of her reliance on his intercession. Anna Maria Tancher van den Bosch, her name before she entered religious life, was born in Germany in 1855. She was raised in a staunchly Protestant family and her father was a Lutheran minister. Over time, Anna Maria fell in love with the teaching of Catholicism and made it known to her father that she wanted to become a Catholic. Her father was not happy with her decision at all, telling her that he was ashamed of her for abandoning her Protestant upbringing. He didn't even want her living in his house anymore. On one occasion when she was living on her own, but before she was yet a Catholic, her father visited her in an attempt to dissuade her from joining the Catholic Church. On that visit, he discovered a book on St. Joseph in her room. After a quick look at the book, he put it down, and later that night at dinner, he ridiculed and mocked St. Joseph in front of his daughter. In her autobiography, Anna Maria recounts the event, she writes, during the dinner, my father said, how can anyone pray to such an outlandish man? This expression outlandish or foreign made a deep impression on me. I thought more and more of St. Joseph and I conceived such a great tender devotion to dear father, St. Joseph. 
as I called him, that I thought I ought to make reparation for the coldness of all unbelievers toward him. After converting to Catholicism, Anna Maria Superior, Anna Maria Supervisor at work, a Lutheran, fired her because she had become a Catholic. He was so mean that after he had fired her, he continued to speak ill of her to others so that she was unable to find work anywhere. As a result, Anna Maria had no money and no place to live. Her great love for St. Joseph was not diminished, though. She daily sought comfort in the love of her father, St. Joseph. Eventually, she was given permission to move into an Augustinian convent and, and do menial tasks as a way of praying for of paying for her room and meals. She wrote, The recollection of my father asking how anyone can pray to such an outlandish person sank deep into my heart, and out of it came a great love for him, St. Joseph and also a great trust in him. I entrusted myself more and more to his paternal care. And many times did St. Joseph prove his solitude for me. Anna Maria eventually became a nun, taking the name Sister Maria Teresa of St. Joseph. In time, she would, she would found a new religion community the Carmelite Sisters of the Divine Heart of Jesus. She would also establish charitable institutes around the world for the remainder of her life. She also referred to St. Joseph as Father St. Joseph. She attributed everything she was able to accomplish to the intercession of St. Joseph, her spiritual father. Pope Benedict the Sixth beautified her in 2006. In the 17th century, Venerable Mary of Agreda wrote about the extraordinary graces God gave and gives to those who are devoted to St. Joseph. Venerable Mary of Agreda was a mystic and the acclaimed author of a work detailing the life of the Virgin Mary titled the mystical city of God. Her work is truly a devotional masterpiece. In the book, she wrote extensively about St. Joseph and was given many insights into the blessings that await those who are devoted to St. Joseph, she wrote. Oh, do I start? I have been informed concerning certain privileges conferred upon St. Joseph by the Most High on account of his great holiness, which are especially important to those who ask his intercession in a proper manner. In virtue of these special privileges, the intercession of St. Joseph is most powerful. First, for attaining the virtue of purity and overcoming the sensual inclinations of the flesh. Second, for procuring powerful help to escape sin and return to the friendship of God. Third, for increasing the love and devotion to most holy Mary. Fourth, for securing the grace of a happy death and protection against the demons in that hour. Fifth, for filling the demons with terror at the mere mention of his name by his clients. Sixth, for gaining health of body and assistance in all kinds of difficulties. Seventh, for securing issue of children in families. These and many other favors God confers upon those who properly and with good disposition seek the intercession of the spouse of our queen, St. Joseph. I beseech all the faithful children 
of the church to be very devoted to him. And they will experience these favors in reality if they disperse themselves as they should in order to receive and merit them. The seven privileges of devotion to St. Joseph are stupendous. Venerable Mary of Agreda heard Our Lady herself speak about them, saying, My daughter, although thou hast described my spouse, St. Joseph, as the most noble among the princes and saints of the heavenly Jerusalem, yet neither canst thou properly manifest his imminent sanctity, nor can any of the mortals know it fully before they arrive at the vision of the divinity. Then all of them will be filled with wonder and praise, as the Lord will make them capable of understanding. On the last day, when all men shall be judged, the damned will bitterly bewail their sins, which prevented them from appreciating this powerful means of their salvation and availing themselves as they easily could have of this intercessor to gain the friendship of the, la of the just judge. The whole human race has much undervalued the privileges and prerogatives conceded to my blessed spouse, and they know not what his intercession with God is able to do. That which my spouse asks of the Lord in heaven is granted upon the earth, and on his intercession depend many and extraordinary favors for, for men, if they do not make themselves unworthy of receiving them. All these privileges were to be a reward for the amiable perfection of this wonderful saint and for his great virtues, for divine clemency is favored, drawn forth from by them, and looks upon St. Joseph with generous liberality ready to shower down its marvelous mercies upon all those who avail themselves of his intercession. In the 20th century, Blessed Concepcion Cal Calbrea de Armida, a famed mystic from Mexico wrote meditations for the purpose of instructing and inspiring the faithful. In one meditation, Blessed Concepcion offered a perspective on the importance of devotion to St. Joseph, placing the following words on the lips of Our Lady. Love him, St. Joseph my child, and make him much loved. If you seek to please me, you cannot do anything that makes me happier than to have a filial devotion to him, to give him honor in your home, and to imitate his virtues. Take him as the patron of your interior and spiritual life, and you will advance greatly toward perfection. Is that the end of it? Yes, that's the end of it. Okay. So Same. now we're going to go to the Litany of St. Joseph. What, on what page? page? 233. 33. I'm going to change. Okay. Okay. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ hear us. Christ graciously hear us. God the Father of heaven. Have mercy on us. God the Son, Redeemer of the world. Have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God. Have mercy on us. Holy Mary. Pray for us. Saint Joseph. 
Pray for us. Noble offspring of David. Pray for us. Light of patriarchs. Pray for us. Spouse of the mother of God. Pray for us. Chaste guardian of the virgin. Pray for us. Foster father of the son of God. Pray for us. Zealous defender of Christ. Pray for us. Head of the holy family. Pray for us. Joseph most just. Pray for us. Joseph most chaste. Pray for us. Joseph most prudent. Pray for us. Joseph most courageous. Pray for us. Joseph most obedient. Pray for us. Joseph most faithful. Pray for us. Mayor of patience. Pray for us. Pray for us. Pray for Lover us. Lover of poverty. Pray for us. Pray for us. Model of workmen. Pray for us. I think, I think we're having a internet thing. Guardian of virgins. Pray for us. Pillar of families. Pray for us. Comfort of the afflicted. Pray for us. Hope of the sick. Pray for us. Patron of the dying. Pray for us. Terror of demons. Pray for us. Protector of the Holy Church. Pray for us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. He has made him Lord of his household. And prince over all his possessions. Let us pray. O God, who in your loving providence chose blessed Joseph to be the spouse of your most holy mother. Grant us the favor of having him for our intercessor cessor in heaven, whom on earth we venerate as our protector. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Very good. Yes. So, yes. That was awesome. We have two more mystics to add to our list of the ones to read. I still haven't read the whole complete um, book, which we're going to have to do one of these days, the book club and read yeah. this book, which is a long one, but oh my gosh. What is the name? She is amazing. What is um, the name? The Complete Visions of Anne Catherine Emmerich. Oh, she yeah, was also yeah. a mystic and she was be beautified by, yeah, by beatified. Pope, beatified by uh, Pope John Paul II in 2004. So she oh. is she's amazing because she starts from and I mean we're talking little words. Um she she starts in Genesis and goes all the way to Revelation. And wow. she does the whole life and everything. And she adds so wow. many tidbits of things that she sees um, that is not in the Bible. But I've that heard are, of her. It's, she's, oh my gosh, but, she is amazing. We, but, I don't, but not have, much. We have done her uh, rosary readings because she adds her visions to her That's rosary. how I must have heard of her. Yes, and she, I, she's my favorite, and I have to read the book. So maybe we'll read it together one time. Yeah. <laughs> Let me ask time. you. You said yesterday that we, um, what we do in the wonder, we do one of of his uh, titles. Which one was it today? Well, see, this is it. It's um, it's not every single time. It's only when oh, okay. they uh, like specifically talk about him. Um, okay. today it was a lot about, um, the mystics and uh, the seven privileges. I don't know. Let me think. Do you see any, any word that comes That's what I was wondering. out to you guys? If you guys see any words that pop out to you, go ahead and put it in the comments and, um, yeah. you know, you can kind of enlighten us because sometimes it stands out to you and sometimes it doesn't. So, yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. It is more about the mystics. 
Um, yeah, today, today it was more talking about um, um, Anna Maria's mm -hmm. um, experience and how St. Joseph changed her life. And she became, uh, she became the Carmelite. She, she made a communion, a community, the Carmelite sisters of the divine heart of Jesus. And that went throughout the whole world. And that so, was all attributed to her devotions to St. Joseph. He kind of, I guess, guided her. I guess we're going to have to read more about so those her. those insights, those insights to her were her privileges. This is called privileges of devotion to St. Joseph. So her privileges were insights. And, you know, I have to tell you, when I pray the rosary, I have unbelievable insights, which is why... I think that, um, you know, they say that prayer is what heals us. And and how do we solve our problems? We need insight, right? So when, when they talk about privileges of devotion to St. Joseph, maybe what we were talking about yesterday that, you know, one of the reasons why this is important to me, first of all, I have a son, Joseph, and a grandson, Joseph, but then also um, that I, I had an absent father, and my children had an absent father, all of my children, unfortunately, so it's kind of uh, handed down through the generations, just like addiction um, I made a decision when I had my children, I quit smoking at 22 because I had, you know, my, uh, not, not at 22, my son, I had him at 19. I was 21 when I quit smoking, but he was a two-year-old. I did not want him seeing me smoking because addiction it was in our family. And I was like, it's not going to happen in my family. And I, they had to just say no to drugs thing back then so I took my kids to the police station and I asked them to do the program for them because you could do that back then in Pennsylvania and so so what has happened is my kids will you, you can't even smoke a cigarette around them they're like oh that they would throw up so I didn't smoke around my kids I didn't allow my kids to be around uh, alcoholics or addicts. I did not let them in my life, those kind of people. And so my children are very unfamiliar with those things. So none of my kids ever smoked. They never drank. No problems there. So now I think that that what has drawn me to this is about the father. So as the rosary helped to heal wounds for me personally, it kind of rooted out my, a lot of my problems. This I feel will help me in giving me that, uh, that uh, sense of fatherhood that I never felt because I didn't even know we were supposed to do with St. Joseph. Like you said, we were supposed to um, uh, make him our protector and our role model. I never knew that. So I think that this will be something that's important that this, this if we have a devotion to St. Joseph, we will have privileges like, like um, she's sister, right? She's a nun, right? Yes. Saint yeah. So St. Um, Catherine Emmerich, she had those privileges for that devotion and it started from her very own father. So um, her father in what he lacked, she fixed in her devotion to him. And then she was given all these insights to help other people like me, like whomever, um, and for our sons, you know, it, if you have a son, you know, that, you know, for whatever, you know, maybe in some way. Yeah, I have. Yeah, I have two sons. Yes. And two daughters. Anyway. Yeah. So. Um, 
It's awesome. These mystics are amazing. And I'm so happy to see two more mystics now pop up. So I'm going to have to write it down and look into them. But I really, but Jeanette, I know we're, we're trying to get off, but I just really want people to understand with this, when we do these devotions, these are healing things for us. Yes. These aren't, these aren't just empty words. These aren't just prayers. These aren't just devotions to make us pious little ladies. No, these are this is very serious work being done and everyone everyone in this world has some difficulty with the you know in relationships whether it be their sons their fathers everyone has these so this the, we i'm only mentioning my personal things to help people relate it to understand, understand. yeah yeah and the same with you so I really want people to get that, you know, this isn't yes. just for us to be pious. This is a very serious. Well, I work. also had a lot of problems with my dad. Um, I, you know, I come from a Latin background, um, Argentinian and um, my, my grandparents and my family are all Italians living in Argentina at, oh. at the time when I was raised. Because 80% of Argentina are Italians. They might oh, wait to Yeah. So um, they were very strong. And I'm an only child. And my father was, he raised me a different way than a normal father would. Um, he There's was no very normal. angry. Very angry. My father, he loved me. I loved him. But mm -hmm. I was raised in a very angry environment. And an environment that I can never be enough. Right. So um, I was never good enough to, right. to do anything. And so I was raised that way. And it was, it was very hard. It was very hard. He was very possessive of my mother, very jealous. Um, it, it was, it was very hard. So um, when I look to St. Joseph and I look at all his virtues, I'm like, wow, St. Joseph. Please help, help my sons have those virtues, you know, right. um, you know, enlighten them. I ask you to ask, I ask you to ask God, because I know you're very close to God, right. um, to take care, I said, right. take care yeah. of all those young men out there that have no fathers. Yes. You know, all those men out there that, that need the guidance, yes. you know. And so, yeah, that's and you know, I Jeanette, you did something um, very good. Your father was at was a presence in your life, and you chose a man. A lot of women, when they have fathers that are like that, they will choose men like that. You didn't. Your husband is the happiest little Irish guy. We know he goes to work six days a week. He keeps what he does, whatever you, I mean, just when you, when I came and he was showing me that wood thing that he was making that he took and he, and he took the two branches and he said, look, it's going to be yeah. our hands because he's yeah. an artist. And, and so you chose a man that at least your sons do have, did not yeah. grow up with an angry father because mm -hmm. for sons to have an angry father is much more dangerous than for, well, I don't know. Women can end up with the angry husband, but you chose someone different. So that is really remarkable. Well, he's not perfect. He has his flaws. Sometimes he does. Yeah, get but angry, he's not angry, but, but, but he, he, he's very loving and he has such a heart, very, such a good yes. heart. And he, you does. know, he, he loves God. He does. And, and he looks at the spiritual things of life and the important things of life, not the material. He so, does. I see I that. Know. When he talked, when you guys like all like the art stuff around your place, I can see his hand in your work. Like the two of you, seriously, like that's that wood thing that he and yes. the way he put the hands, that really is you too. So you know, you might have had that, but but you 
chose a very different path and you were, you know, you, you were able to, to protect yourself from that. And you know what we can, we forgive all children, whatever their father, alcoholic, anger, whatever we, we need to forgive our fathers for not being able to be there for whatever reason, whether it's their DNA, whatever. So, you know, that's, that is another thing about, about this. We have to forgive our fathers because, because if you watch what I put up on Facebook, uh, forward boldly from church militant, she did a, um, thing on St. St. on, um, John Paul II. Oh, this was unbelievable. He went to the prison to the man that shot him. He, he as soon as he shot him, immediately he forgave him. Oh my and gosh. She, and she said, Do we need um do we need for someone to be sorry first? No. Guess what happened? That man, I don't know how, but they showed a picture of him in the in the film today. And it said um, that he had flowers. It showed the picture of him. It was the real picture of him. He had flowers and he laid them on his grave. 20 years. They showed um, uh, um, John Paul II visiting him in prison. Wow. And, 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 And he was kissing his hand. The you know, he was kissing the Pope's hand and telling him he was sorry that he had shot him. And And he had forgiven him immediately. 20 years later, after he's dead, I think it was 20 years, he went to his grave and he put flowers. And for the life of me, I can't remember what he said, but he was, he was saying how sorry he was. I'll I'll Uh, have to, I'll post it on top of this. And And also another saint that I just, I cannot get over. I mean, I did not even know about her until we went to that relics. Um, thing oh, yeah. was it Saint 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 Gertrude? Was it Saint Gertrude? Yeah. Of, oh the, my goodness! The Holy story, Souls. guys, look it up. Oh my goodness, she for was the Holy Souls. Oh yes, yeah, she was so amazing. She was just a child, and and she had all these oh, brothers and sisters. Oh no, you're talking about Saint Maria Goretti. Is that her name? The Maybe one, gonna... the one who immediately yeah, that got gave, physically abused and then her. killed. Oh yes. my goodness! And then she was so, so loving how 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 she forgave him. He got yes. put in jail and she came back. And, and her she, mother, and he he had visions of her in jail, and yep. she forgave him. And she told her mother to do the same, and her mother did. Yes. Oh my gosh, that just is amazing. That story is amazing. But let me finish this one part. What what she said on Forward Boldly. She said a lot of, she said, and she named a couple of places in the Bible, I think three different places. And she, it, she said, it never says, it says to forgive and it never says that someone has to say they're sorry first. He said, it, she said, if John Paul the, the II had waited till he was sorry, that conversion never would have happened. Your immediate forgiveness is actually good for the, the soul and a potential for a conversion in a person. So, yes. okay. Anyway. okay. So are we ready so for our prayers? Yes, our we are. Prayers? Yes, we are. Okay. And the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Eternal Father, I offer thee the most precious blood of thy divine Son, Jesus, in union with the masses said throughout the world today, for all the holy souls in purgatory, for sinners everywhere, for sinners in the universal church, those in my own home and within my family. Amen. Amen. Is it this one? Can you do this one too? Yes. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan 
and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen. Thank you so Thank much. You so much. <laughs> and we hope everybody has a wonderful day. And um, and take a look at that forward boldly. And a great also, start to your week, Monday. Yeah. And also um, the relics. I will repost that story of um, of Maria Goretti. I just have to oh, find. Oh, yes. Yeah. So powerful. Yeah. That changed my whole outlook yeah. on on who and when and why and and how we're supposed to forgive. I'm like, whoa, that's like yep. 7,777 or something yep. like that. And, like and it's you, in the Bible. And you know, every, every other week you can get in an argument with a family member and, and be like, well, he better say he's sorry. No, forgive immediately. And friends and yeah. Yep. Everybody. And, and, and anybody yes forgive immediately yes so watch that i'm, I'm gonna re i'll send you that link i posted it but okay. i'm gonna send it to you okay all right we'll thank see you, you tomorrow god willing bye, bye, bye thank you okay let me find this sorry takes a minute to find this where is it why is it not coming up stop recording oh no i'm trying to find it but i can't find it Oh, there it is. Okay.